Hi guys, welcome to Southland Dog Training. The video you're about to watch is all about how to teach the dog to walk nicely using one of these, a slip lead. Before we get into it, a couple of safety things you need to be aware of. We do not recommend slip leads for puppies. You do not start using a slip lead until at least six months plus. We do not recommend slip leads for flat faced breeds or dogs with soft palates unless you are under the supervision of a professional. Now, slip leads are an absolutely great tool. You also must remember with a slip lead that it does matter which way it goes on. We will demonstrate this again in the video, but if you want the dog to walk on your left, when you pick up the lead, it should resemble a lowercase p, and you always have the dog in front of you to begin with, and you pop it over the dog's head so the dog's now set up to walk on your left. If you want the dog to walk on your right, it should resemble a lowercase q, it goes over the head. It should look something like this. So when you pull it, it tightens, but then relaxes. Again, this will be demonstrated in the video. Slip leads are a great tool if used properly. Hope you enjoy the video. So let's see what we've got going on here. Oh, hello. She went to the green yesterday and had a big party. <sighs> so is this what she's normally like? It's a constant battle, it's not it nice. Yeah. That's yeah. why we've probably got a catch going, she's got too much energy. Yeah. Walking much, but I can't walk as much because I'm struggling. No, it is it's, it's that vicious circle where you know she needs more exercise, but you can't physically exercise her because it's just not pleasant. Right, let's just go straight into it. Yeah, you can jump on me, darling. You can jump on me. Yes, fine. Well, I'll keep it on. She's <laughs> let the lead off of her. She'll go nuts. So step one, she's got too much pent up energy. Yeah, so we need to drain that. Okay. It's very, very important to get some of this energy out of the dog. Otherwise, you're working against the dog. Lots of high energy dogs. <laughs> with high energy dogs you're going to constantly be battling the dog battling the dog battling the dog if it's full of beans so we want to take just some of this off the dog and this is also great for your engagement as well it's a flirt pole don't overdo it with a dog don't make them sick by going round and round and round in a circle let the dog win but don't rush this part yeah Oh, you got it. What's her name? Roxy. Rox, sit. Yes. <laughs> get it, get it. Where is it? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Get it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, distracted easily, are we, little one? Oh, she got it, got it. It's gonna fling. Get it. She doesn't actually have that much energy. So, what we're gonna use for this one is a slip lead. Although I'm a big fan of harnesses, this one doesn't really give us the control we're looking for for a dog like this. So, Ben, do you have a slip lead for me? Indeed. Perfect. So a slip lead just gives us more control of that head and that body. What we're going to do, straight over your head, come here little one, don't worry, life's good. Got it all tangled up, there we go. So you can see the dog's a little bit concerned and you might see this from time to time. Notice how I deal with it. I'm not telling the dog it's okay. I'm not pandering, I'm not going, it's okay, don't worry, dog. because the dog's already worried. So if I start doing that, I'm projecting worry onto the dog when the dog's already worried. What I do is I just crack on with it. There's nothing to worry about. 
And then I just stay here for a second, make sure that that dog isn't freaking out as much. Slip lead goes on. I'll demonstrate at the end exactly how that slip lead goes on for everybody. The slip lead, top of the head, as high up as we can go, almost like at a dog show. It should be, you can barely get one finger under it. Yeah, but notice that's nice and tight. She can breathe, absolutely fine. But I can barely get my fingers under it. It shouldn't be able to easily rotate. When it's on, it should look like this. This bit should be under the dog's ear, this little lever bit. So when you pull on it, tightens, releases, tightens, releases, tightens, releases. Then we're gonna take this off. We're gonna take this off. Give me a second, darling. Perfect. So next stage, I wanna teach her what this means. The mistake a lot of people make with a slip lead is they put it on the dog, they go for a walk, and then they wonder why the dog's not actually stopping pulling, but pulling more. This tightens, constricts. So if the dog pulls and this constricts, the dog's likely to pull more in a panic to try to escape it. So we have to teach the dog, when this tightens, how to turn that off. And we do that for a simple game called pressure and release. I have pull on the lead, yes, I mark with yes. We're using the South End Dog Training, cold press here, all the benefits of raw food, but without the mess, I can keep it in my pockets. Yes. So all I'm doing, very gentle pressure on this lead. Yes. And as soon as the dog gives into that, I'm marking it with yes and rewarding. Notice we haven't even attempted to go in a straight line yet. Yes. I'm just slowly introducing the dog to the concept of what this lead means. Yes. Very gentle pressure. Yes. Walking a dog should be effortless. This is your steering wheel. Yes. Pressure on. Yes. Cool, you're slobbery, aren't we, little one? So look in, time to add a bit of pressure. Yes. And so you don't overfeed your dog. This is also why we recommend hand feeding. Hand feeding, you take your dog's daily food allowance and you stick that in a treat pouch or your pocket and you don't have to worry about overfeeding. So the dog's laying down, gentle pressure. Yes. As Soon as the dog gives into that pressure, I mark and reward it. Yes. Now what I'm gonna do, step one, take the edge off. Notice that we didn't go straight into it. We actually hung around for a little bit to make sure the dog calms down. That's very, very important. If you go to flirt pole straight to a walk, the dog's amped up. We're using a flirt pole to take a bit of that energy off. Let the dog calm down a little bit, pop the lead on, and when the dog's calm, then we go into the pressure bit. Step three is starting to shape where the dog should be. So there's a perfect opportunity, she's distracted. Pressure on, yes. Arm comes round, that's where I want you to be. Yes. Arm comes round, that's where I want her to be. So I'm gonna start paying her for being by my side. And again, notice I'm not saying heel, 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 because the dog doesn't know what it means so offers me a sit. Yeah, that's what I see people doing a lot. Hill, 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 but the dog's not doing it. Yeah, because it doesn't understand. Eventually what we do, hill, and we can lead the dog where we want, take a few steps, few steps, few steps, reward the dog. Hello. So distracted, perfect opportunity. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Yes. See, the dog actually went to do that by itself. And you repeat each step until necessary. Notice there's minimal distractions right now. Pressure on. Yes. 
that pressure stayed on that time until the dog listened so this is the next bit I want my arm short but relaxed by my side so I'm going to hold the lead up in the air like this and I want to make sure that I am by the dog's side leg to shoulder my arm is going to come down here eight and it's going to hold the lead here the shortest part I can hold the lead that when my arms in a natural position it's nice and relaxed then I'm going to put it through my finger like so and I'm going to let this bit traipse down uh, you think it's a game don't worry round my finger cut it off so it looks like that this bit has to be locked so you don't get rope burn or hurt your hand the rest of it can just go into my hand now what we're going to do short but relaxed lead we're going to practice some figures of eights so I'm going to walk and I'm going to use my right leg and it's going to come in front of the dog like that we're going to create some spatial awareness right leg in front of the dog like that I'm not kicking the dog right leg just creating that spatial awareness going to throw in some left turns slowly try not to drag the dog I want me and the dog to come in sync now I'm going to use the opposite hand to start rewarding the dog here we will face this out at a later date but it's easy with the lead in my left hand to come across the dog like that all of the competition stuff and nice fancy stuff we can fix later right now we're just getting our basics down so we're going to walk a bit figure of eight come this way yes. reward that was a chewy bit, was that? Go this way, go this way, reward. Notice if the dog is chewing that bit, I don't move too much as the dog's chewing. This way, this way, this way, this way, yeah, reward. The next step, we're going to take a few steps and practice stopping. I want to get some auto stops. Now the way I'm going to do that is every time I stop, I'm going to apply gentle pressure up. So we're going to take a few steps, we're going to stop. Good, we're going to reward the dog. We're going to take a few more steps, we're going to stop. We're going to reward the dog. I want the dog to get in the habit of every time I stop, she's to stop. Few steps, stop. Few steps, stop. Again, look at our position. Notice I'm not letting the dog forage in front. That's where that little pull up comes from. Still just implementing that concept of pressure. Up, relax. Up, relax. Now this bit's working because of step one and two. Practice that turn. Few steps, stop. Few steps, stop. Notice I'm going longer between my rewards. So I don't have to constantly be doing it. Apologies for the noise, this is an active training center notice I'm getting the attention as well when she first came out the car her attention was everywhere other than on me definitely rewarding this aren't we darling so now we want to get moving a little bit and again practicing that up on that lead up slows the dog down so we're going to walk a little bit if the dog goes in front up and relax up and relax to help the dog, I want to pick up my pace a little bit. Head up, shoulders up, let's go. Anytime I feel tension on the lead, communicating where I want that dog to be. And it works because the dog understands the concept of pressure. Goes in front, slow down. I go this way, come with me. I go this way, come with me. 
Pressure always being taught to be turned off. Pressure because the dog's going rogue. This way, off. This way, off. Notice the dog hasn't choked once. Hasn't gone blue in the face, isn't gasping for air. Come here. And that's because we're teaching the dog what the lead means. A few steps, let's go. We're in sync. Walking a dog, regardless of size, regardless of breed, shouldn't be a constant battle. If you take the time to use the correct tools and teach the dog what it means, look how you go from a dog lunging, pulling, to walking nicely. And it really doesn't take that long. The next step would be to go outside and master this up and down the street. Again, all the time in the world to go to the woods, to go to beaches, to go to nature reserves. Progress as the dog progresses. And we'll just see, just to test right now, because there's some real world action going on down here. Let's see how the dog copes when it sees another dog, shall we? Look at my posture, head up, shoulders up, nice and relaxed communicating with the lead, slow down if necessary. She's a bit nervy, so what's happening is the cameraman behind her is setting her off a little bit. So if the dog starts to go too much, I'm just gonna slow down. Just slow everything down. Pace changes are really, really good. Let's go. Couple of figures of eights just to reset, trying not to slip over. Head up, shoulders up, and we can go again. Perfect, nice walking. See that figure of eight just takes the edge off. That. Give me. Yeah, good girl. If I need to, I can just take a few steps back. Yes. There we go. Get that focus back on me. Again, I don't want to be in a battle with this dog. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Bit unsure about people behind her. But again, look how I'm dealing with it. Not saying it's okay, don't worry, none of that. Just taking our time, nice and slow, nice and slow. Don't be afraid to go back a step. Everything we do to teach the dog, those figures of eights, those auto stops, slowing down, speeding up, getting some quicker reinforcements in if necessary. Just getting that focus back on you. Remember, this is day one. The dog's not gonna be perfect. Uh -uh, come here, a few steps forward, stop, practice auto sit, give the dog a treat. The tension's back facing this way. We can move on without a constant battle. Arm by my side, short and relaxed. Just simply slowing everything down. 